ਆਪੇ ਕਰ ਵੀ ਗਿਨਾਤ ਕੇ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਸ਼ਿਰ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕਰਦਾ ਸਿਰਫ ਓਲਾਹੁ ਅੱਲਾਹੁ 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 ਪੜੀਏ ਅੱਲਾਹੁ 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 ਅਸੂਬੂ ਬਦਮਿਨ ਤਾਲ ਆਤੇ ਵਲੈਲੁ ਦਜਾਮਿਨ ਵਾਫਰਾਤੇ ਅੱਲਾਹੁ 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 ਸਾਤੇ ਸ਼ਜਰੂਨ ਤਕਲ ਹਜਰੂ ਸ਼ਕਲ ਸ਼ਰਤੇ ਅੱਲਾਹੁ 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 Uh, what I would uh, like to do uh, in this uh, presentation here um, is share with you today uh, some aspects of Sufism, particularly in the Naqshbandiya, uh, in the Indo-Pakistani subcontinent, and particularly um, in that context, uh, what uh, various ways of following the path of the prophet or the tariqiyya muhammadiyya or the muhammadan path and before i do that um, i would like to give a, a brief introduction um, to some people and uh, some <coughs> concepts um, that uh, for example sufism um, and then discuss a little bit about the naqshbandiyya and some important people in that before i talk about the uh, path of, of Muhammad there. Uh, the English word Sufism is a uh, translation of Tasawwuf. Uh, it's uh, in, the, in the days of the Prophet وسلم, uh, there were people who wanted to, to do more in their daily lives than the required uh, practices as laid out by the Sharia and they spent more time in addition to praying and fasting uh, they uh, prayed more for example to Hajjud prayers uh, they would fast uh, in addition to days during Ramadan over time uh, of a couple centuries they began to be called Sufis there no one knows exactly why one of the reasons perhaps is they wore wool, which in Arabic is suf. And as time went on, uh, by, we, by the time, for example, we get to the fourth uh, uh, century um, Hijri, after the, the Hijra, we find that there become spiritual genealogies, uh, which are sometimes called selsela, well, they are called selsela's, uh, chains. And we find that there are pan, what become pan-Islamic lineages. So for example, I'm sure uh, just about all of you have heard of Qadris. Uh, that's one of the pan-Islamic pan lineages that's named after uh, Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, rahmatullahi uh, The Surah Vardis, 
uh, another uh, lineage um, named after Abu Najib Suravardi, Rahmatullah the Kubrawaya, uh, the Chishteya. And I, what I would like to communicate uh, in addition to this historical information is that what makes, it, at least uh, in my opinion, what makes this important is the connecting, the very conscious connecting uh, back to the Prophet In other words, these salsalas uh, for Sufis, when a person enters the, the path, the Sufi path, he or she takes the hand or the shaykh gives uh, his hand to the disciple and this is something that his shaykh back to his shaykh back to his shaykh all the way back to the prophet and this is very significant and this is much more as you can imagine than just a simple handshake there's a lot more going on here and this is, for those of you who um, know uh, other aspects, as I'm sure you all do, for example, hadith, it's the same principle. A hadith is, is considered to be sahih, uh, valid, because it was transmitted from one person back to another person, to another back X number of generations, to the Prophet Muhammad And so this is a principle that is extremely uh, important, to say the least. Um, so for, and, and people who receive educations, whether it be through the hand of a sheikh, or whether it be through the transmitted verbal knowledge of hadith, or Quran, or fiqh, these this is the kind of education that is called mustanid. It is connected in a very vital way to the Prophet Muhammad So for example, my university education is, is not mustanid. There's a very uh, important differentiation here. So if we go back um, um, to, back to the Sufi uh, Salsalas, what I would like to share with you today is one particular uh, salsala that I um, have studied and have contact with Shuyukhin, the Naqshbandiya. And this is named after Bahuddin Naqshband, who was, uh, died in the 8th century uh, Hejri and who's buried near uh, Bukhara in present-day Uzbekistan. And the Naqshbandiya from Central Asia, one of the first places that um, this uh, baraka and transmission of the Prophet through Bahadi Naqshband went, was to India. And in the 11th century, uh, through again a process of, of transmission, um, there um, a, a, a very important Sheikh Ahmed Sirhindi, uh, Il Mujadid, Rahmatullah who has been mentioned and will probably be mentioned more than a few times uh, in this conference, um, began a new chapter in the Naqshbandiya. Uh, he, in, in many ways, um, he did many things, um, one of which was making very explicit something that had been implicit or relatively implicit before which was the fact that if someone is going to be following the the Naqshbandiya path the first thing this person has to do is be very aware that the Naqshbandiya path is the path of the Prophet and, and so this, I would like to share some of his um, illumination or explication um, because he developed this, as you will see, um, in, a, in, in a very sophisticated fashion. He discussed how one 
uh, how a Muslim should model his or her behavior after that of the Prophet And he sometimes mentioned what he would call the inner and the outer sunnah. So it's very important uh, to be expressing this sunnah outwardly in one's actions, in, one, in one's dress, but also to have the inner transformation also um, occurring. Now, it's very easy to outwardly, as you all know, it's very easy to outwardly see um, someone who models their behavior um, in the path of the prophet. It's much more difficult to, uh, for someone to feel or experience this inner sunnah, this realization. And I would like to discuss some of his, what he, what he laid out as seven degrees of imitating the prophet. Before I do that, I would like to quote something um, that he has mentioned in his collected letters, the Maktubat al-Sharif. No Muslim can become a protege of God. A protege of God is someone who is near, uh, near God, relatively speaking, unless he follows the prophetic example and this is because of the preference of the Prophet Muhammad himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who has reached a spiritual level that no other Prophet has reached. And let me, in brief form, uh, share with you uh, these uh, seven degrees of imitating uh, or uh, following the, the exemplary example of the Prophet. The first one is Ahmed, and this is from Ahmed Sirhindi's uh, collected letters, is that of what he calls uh, common Muslims. And he defines this group as uh, ordinary ulama who lead pious lives. This would uh, fall in that category. Who recognized the legitimacy of the Sharia but who have not controlled their nafs or I translate as ego. Um, and this, in addition to the, uh, the ordinary ulama and common Muslims, this imitation is sufficient for a believer to uh, enter heaven. The second degree are, are those people uh, who I would, he, he doesn't say this, but who I would call Sufi aspirants, people who, are, who have been initiated by a, a, a sheikh who's connected uh, to us in a salsella, who are actively participating um, in a daily practice to try to conquer um, or control their, their nafs, their, their ego. There's a third degree which uh, he doesn't uh, discuss very much, uh, he says, those who experience the attraction of God uh, in, in Sufi uh, terminology, these people sometimes are called majdubs. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, have run into majdubs, but some, sometimes they visibly, uh, you can see they're visibly attracted uh, to God uh, by some of the things they do just uh, out of their control. Uh, the fourth uh, degree would be uh, people who Ahmed, uh, the Mujadid, he's called the Mujadid, Ahmed Syrian is called the Mujadid because he was the renewer of the uh, second millennium, um, are those who are truly imitating uh, the Prophet وسلم, and whose uh, ego, whose nafs is at peace. And he calls this the station of the well-grounded ulama who are manifesting the perfections of prophethood. The fifth degree um, is those who have received additional divine favor, uh, who manifest uh, the, the, um, the perfections of the, the resolute prophets. The sixth uh, are those who are favored by God's love and who participate uh, in being the beloved uh, of Allah. 
Now these six degrees are all in the, in the spiritual path of, of the Nakshpandeya, the, the Saluk, are all considered to be a sense to God. And the last degree, which is, um, which is something that uh, I, presume, I assume very few people achieve, is to come back to humankind, to the Muslim community, um, and, and communicate this mystical ascent to teach this to other people which is exactly what the Prophet Muhammad did after his miraj. So this is a, um, these are the seven degrees as um, the Mujadid rahmatullah lay, uh, laid out. Now, as you can probably see, if a person is following this path in the Naqshbandiya, under the guidance of a sheikh, it's, it goes without saying that this person is following in the path of the prophet. They're, 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 they're not different. They're, it's the same. So what I would like to share with you is another, gent uh, another famous sheikh, uh, Mir Dard, um, who was a Naqshbandi Mujadidi, but he, uh, from his father, who I'll, ex I'll explain this in a second here, um, went and initiated people in the Tariqay Muhammadiyya, in addition to the Naqshbandi Mujadadiyya. And I would like to share some other, uh, this is something that, um, as a historian, um, is of interest, and I, and I hope that uh, and as a person who studies Sufism is of interest and I, I would like to share some of these things with, with you. Hajim Mirdar, um, both of his parents uh, were Sayyids uh, from Delhi and they were descendants um, through Hussein uh, and, and his father Nasir Muhammad Andalib was a descendant of Bahuddin Naqshband, the founder figure of the Naqshbandiya and he was also a descendant of the 11th Shi Imam, Hassan uh, Askari. His mother was a descendant, in addition to being a Sayyidah, uh, was a descendant of Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullah who, as you remember, is the founder figure of the Qadriya. Now, what's interesting here um, is that this is also uh, connecting back to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, through one's lineage not only a spiritual lineage but a blood lineage and and so this is a um, this is Mir Dar and his father were particularly uh, blessed in this regard uh, in terms of having so many um, connections back to uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Now, what happened, in his, and I'll explain this in a second here, to his father was he had an extraordinary experience, which I will recount in his own words. But I need to explain um, uh, the context of this. In, if you look at these salsalas, and I'm thinking now particularly the Naqshbandi Salsala, you will find that there are some links where the two sheikhs um, didn't meet each other in physical form. The transmission from the Prophet Muhammad happened with the, uh, let's call it the spirit of the sheikh. This is called uh, an Uwaisi initiation. It's, um, it's named after Uwais al-Qarani, a Yemeni, who met the Prophet وسلم, in spirit and became a Muslim uh, while he was in Yemen, never having met uh, the Prophet. 
And so this is a way that a person who is blessed with this kind of experience can have a much, uh, you might say, um, there's, less chain, there's less links in the chain between the person and Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, Andalib, Mir uh, Dard's father, had been, I, I'd like to recount uh, to you how this uh, tariqi Muhammadiyya uh, came about. Um, Nasr al-Andalib had been in a uh, secluded, uh, in seclusion. It wasn't something he did very often, uh, but he had been in total seclusion for a week. And the first thing, the first person to meet him after this uh, seclusion was his son, Mirdar. And the first thing he said to his son is that you are the awl al-Muhammadin al-Khawlasin. You're the first of the pure uh, Muhammadans. So I would like to explain what happened here. And I will read this um, in Mir Dard's um, own words. He ordered me, except they're in English, <laughs> uh, he ordered me to be the first who submitted and the first who took an oath. This, this oath is the bayah, the oath of, an, uh, of initiation, with his hand in his firm, exalted path of the tariqi Muhammadiyya. He instructed me that a Muhammadan, that someone who's following this path, should not be agitated and restless, but content and happy. He informed me that God had specifically favored us Muhammadans through the spirit of Hazrat Imam Hassan to the extent that he had been given a special connection. This is Imam Hassan uh, anhu, the son of Ali uh, Ibn Abi Talib. He was instructed to transmit this connection to others, this connection um, with Imam Hassan. And the beginning of this connection was that Andalib was, that Andalib was experiencing would in time be completed and made visible by the expected Mahdi at the end of time. Andalib, Mir's, Mirdard's father, inquired to Imam Hassan about whether he should name this path the way of Hassan, because that's who communicated to him. And Imam Hassan replied that this work was not of his own doing, and that we are all children lost in the ocean of reality. Uh, Hassan Radilanu said, your name is Muhammad, this is uh, to uh, Haja Andalib, and our character is that of Muhammad, and our call is that of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This very path is Tariqai Muhammadiyya alayhi salam. Our path to God is the prophetic path and our path is the Muhammadan path. And so this is a, a very special occurrence that happened to um, Mirdard's father. And to be able to have this experience uh, while being awake makes um, by extension almost um, Nasr al-Andalib a almost uh, a son of Ali ibn Abi Talib and and so I would like to communicate oh, by the way this is not something that is unique in, in the sense of Uwaisi initiations Bahuddin uh, Naqshban uh, rahmatullah alayhi, uh, Abdul Qadir Jalani rahmatullah alayhi, and Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi, all of these three people in addition to many other uh, noteworthy uh, religious figures have had these kind of experiences. Now what was this Tariqi Muhammadiyya and how did it, uh, how is it different or how did it complement the Naqshbandi um, path? Uh, Mir Dar saw it as encompassing all the Islamic paths. 
in the same way as the Nakshbandeya Mujadadeya. And in addition to the, the Zekar exercises and the contemplation exercises and things uh, similar to that, um, Mirdard emphasized that one should uh, read the Quran because this is, as in his own words, is the clear Imam. And so here is another connection um, to, do, to, uh, to follow in the, the prophetic path. He says, and, and I quote, listen with the ear of pure inspiration. The pure Mohammedans in each station and from each veil only hear the voice of God's word. And he felt, and he expressed in his writings, uh, Mirdar did, that this tariqi Muhammadiyya was a more direct path for people to follow. He says that other lineages, uh, those named uh, after, let's say, Bahuddin Naqshband or Abdul Qadir Jalani, they have overtones of self-centeredness because they're named after these individuals. And, and, and I would like to also um, you know, note here that, um, well, I've translated this to give you a flavor of what it's like uh, to read something. Um, one, one of the things that happens uh, when you translate something into English, particularly from an Islamic language, it really changes. Um, it, it 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 changes significantly, even though the meaning is there. So I would I just like to share this um, this passage um, from Mirdar's original Persian text, and he's he's talking about his father again after 1,100 and some odd years. This special grace became visible from the interior fountain of my father, the true Syed and the most true leader, the world illuminating sun of the sphere of Syedship, the greatest luminary of the heaven of sanctity, the heir of the office of prophetic perfections and the vice regent of divinity, the master of the prayer mat of proximity of the imamit, the place of manifestation of the Mohammedan light, the master of the divine law. He who has attained divine truth, the expert of the path, the revealer of gnosis, the lord of divine wisdom, the protector of the nation of Mustafa, the enterprising one, the man of high rank, who is made indigent by divine greatness, the strength of the Naqshbandi and Qadri progeny, who has increased the Mohammedan path and value, the helper of the prophetic religion, the venerable Khaja Muhammad Nasir al-Muhammadi. And he declared his father to be the true representative of the Prophet وسلم, on earth. This was in the 18th century, um, the 12th century Hejri. And he felt as if he was following in his father's footsteps because he had become close to God through assiduous performance of, um, of the prophetic sunnah. And in addition, he, as you remember, he was a, um, a Sayyid um, uh, from both his mother and father. And so what I would like to, to leave you with, with this long historical interlude, is the, the greatness um, of, the, of the many paths that are available um, to Muslims through the thousands of sheikhs and ulama um, that uh, that have been uh, in in the in the world and and still alhamdulillah uh, are here to guide us 
And w I would like to end um, again in the words of, of Haj Amir Daud, rahmatullah with a short du'a. Allah, bless our master Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with your numerous attributes. Allah, bless our master Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with all the lights of your mercy. Allah, bless our master Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with all the numerous signs of your majesty and with your numerous names. Allah, Bless our Master Muhammad وسلم, with all the aims of your names. Allah, bless our Master Muhammad وسلم, from the absence of all defects. Allah, bless our Master Muhammad وسلم, and all your created beings, especially his family, companions, and those who love him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Assalamu alaikum. I feel very um, humbled in your presence of, of sheikhs and shuk and the uh, scholars and the awliya. I, I want to say before I begin, this is a poem in English. We aren't um, as lucky in, in American poetry to have a tradition that the that is there in Urdu and in Arabic and in countries with a deep tradition, Turkish. So in a way I was trying in this poem, the Maulud, I call it, to forge in an American poetics at least the beginning of some kind of praise of the Prophet Sallallahu in our own language. The closest we have of this kind of poetry is Walt Whitman. He has a beautiful poem called a Persian lesson. You should look for it. It talks about Sufis and it mentions Allah. And this is Walt Whitman and died in 1872. He is kind of our American saint of poetry. Mm? He had the biggest vision. And Emily Dickinson, who was a great saint as well. She had another vision. So this was an attempt to find somehow a praise of the Prophet Sallallahu in America. So please forgive me for its faults. I dedicate it to my Sheikh Muhammad al Jamal al from Jerusalem and to Sheikh Hisham and all the beautiful Sufis and all the Auli of Allah who are you. Our Sheikh this morning said, Everyone is an Auli of Allah. So, alhamdulillah. Starting from here, starting from here, in order to find the heart that passes through station after station on its way to the goal in order to see the flashing reflection in which, against the whole starry background of the seen and unseen cosmos, the light of the illuminated one, Muhammad, beside whom there are only shadows, shows. No action needed, no gesture of ours, but the whole rapidly fluttering celluloid motion picture threaded atomically through all the slits in the universe at once so that all scenes at once flash past and are entirely revealed. To see, to suddenly, with no guile, face to face, with no preconceived cartoon, however serious, no projected experiential image, but rather an image from himself alone beamed outward to us from the innermost vantage, that the whole light burst forth upon our shores in wave after wave of pure resplendence, flowering flood after gush of foam, in which each bubble is a picture and each picture inside is exact, that the shine of the sent one, beloved Prophet Muhammad, whose edges are self's edges themselves, edgeness itself, whose total vastness is that in which we sit or stand, by canyon's rim or twilight grim protuberance out like a peninsula into the oceans of the heart, in terrestrial turbulence or sky's overturned concave bowl of stars, all floating so lacily apart, held by fine webs of traceries finer than the finest thought of fineness, that subtlest influence that keeps things from snapping apart and drifting off into alien spaces, Oh, Muhammad, that face of his, 
bent from first light, over his hands in his lap, under the tree of loyalty. That being he was, under the cloud that always shadowed him, shading him. That transmitter he was of stature and nobility to the creature of reality most loved by God, but groveling in idolatry. That light that went ahead, having been the first light shed from the first burst from nothing but be, and it is being for us, having been from then, the ultimate word from the primordial sea. Allah Muhammad's birth. These are sections from this poem. It's a long poem. I'm just reading sections. Muhammad's birth, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And by the way, sallallahu alaihi wasallam is implied in the poem since it comes from that. Inshallah. So, Muhammad's birth. About his birth, the whole world knows in the depths of its atoms. Amina bore him, and he was immediate in his praise of Allah. Some say he first did sajda, others that he spoke the shahada and then was silent. Already at birth he was the prophet of unity. The movie played backwards from his glorious end. His father Abdullah from the tribe of Hisham, Hashim died without seeing him. The wet nurse Halima took him to her heart and their goat's milk flowed. All the desert burst into sumptuous flower from his singular presence. The nighttime covered him with its spangled blanket. The day fluffed the wool of its sides for him to tend it like huddled sheep. A cloud went with him to shade him from the heat at the desert saint's surprise banquet. He could see the prophet's space among the caravan leaders and called out for him to fill it. Where is the boy who has come by Allah to show me the prophet's seal? A mole, it is said, between his shoulder blades with circling hairs like a horse's mane. He grew up trustworthy among men for whom this was a difficult quality. He took from the cloth of unity the black stone of eternity and placed it bodily in the side of God's house. Cornerstone finality, stone we kiss out of awe of God's majesty. Nothing so small as neutrino or gravitino. This is that all the universe knows Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All the universe is that consciousness. Nothing so small as neutrino or gravitino, less than a tiny click in a space less than the size of a moat, or even the shadow of a moat. Nor so large as the largest galactic cluster of scattering debris nor the mass and tilted swirl of the whole universe milk it all swims in, fails to call out your name, Muhammad, by the mere fact of its being. For there is no God but Allah is the single uttermost essence, untainted by any shadow or substance of atomic grime or even the slightest tick of the time clock running down. And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, is the creation from that first breath of spirit, that first clutch of light that had breathed into it, be Muhammad. Starting the spin out of oceanic matter in whirlpool bang that is inside out still more slowly stretching to the limits of limit itself. Out and out to the greatest height and depth and width like the spindly lote tree of the furthest limit of matter reaching to the ultimate branch tip, root tip, edge and lip of silhouette, latticework, spiderweb, nebula and wisp of stars and starlight shooting through wave after wave of silent darkness, both alive and dead, both blue and red. And behind that darkness, black holes or space pits funneling matter and antimatter into somewhere unknown, tight in its entrapment of radiance, Venus flytrap of light that lets none out. Nowhere, no side pocket, lung, eye socket, drain or heartbeat, silence or shout that does not call out the syllables of your name, Muhammad, praised one, existence's messenger from the one true existent, Allah. Subhanallah. 
tiny spider on a leaf. The tiny spider on a leaf knows you as he finds relief from patient hunger winding spry spider silk around a fly. The whale in all his deep sea booms knows you as he moves through rooms of sparkling coral lost in song to a mile wide radius whale throng. Worms in soil among the rocks know you in their slimy clocks of special worm metabolism in cold earth's wintry hypnotism. The eagle with his cloud white plumage knows you in his swoop and image eagle eyed of rabbit crouched in snow awaiting to be touched. The dragonfly with nervous flutter knows you as he sees the stutter of his green reflection pass across a pool's cool mirror mass. The bear in polar ice cap winter knows you curled in cave interior as the season passes slow around his sleep thirty below. Seasons know you in their thaw and flower going suddenly raw and fresh with green flesh ripe and new and juicy in the morning dew. The mite, the moat, mosquito, mole, all know you in their special hole. A law has given every creature to be its home and function teacher. Drift in space of spray or light, know you by your face. Ignite the actions that so fill each speck as matter sinks like a deep sea wreck. Earth in all its daily rounds knows you in its deepest sounds of rising, falling, heaving, roll. The earth's an ocean, sky's its pole. So every atom lit alone knows you from its nucleic throne in isolation or in chorus with the atoms created for us in every leaf or web or knot of ripple of the stillest thought across the pond of mind or pool that stretches out its liquid jewel like a net or radar cup to catch the furthest spatial influence, thatch of sound waves crisscrossed with the flow of particles in one long river glow to make one glorious cry to you, their light, your gentle eye, Mohammed, your presence in actual space that put all meaning in its place. For you preceded everything that has dimension, casts a ring of light or shadow around its head, of glass or flesh, of vapor, lead or creature. You were first, your dot of light, the one that flows in thought to unite the streams of earth and sky into one horizon in the heart's wide eye. Muhammad, messenger, your self-form, the pattern of all the living swarm from thin to fat, from small to vast, of all that flows between first and last, because Allah alone is first, and only Allah is last. The thirst for knowing him must stop at that. You are the city of lights, habitat. <laughs> And I have a very, inshallah, daring thing to do, and I would like you to join me in it. It's a qasida in English. And it's based on a Moroccan jalal, so, uh, but I would like you to join in. The jalal is, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah There's a garden in the soul Where God's golden roses bloom And our hearts are opening Like fresh roses in a room In those roses is a jewel Placed there by our prophet dear Muhammad, God's blessings on Him and all who chants to hear La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, born in Mecca in a time not so very unlike ours, when the idol worshippers tried to gain all earthly powers. Pure as snow, his heart was clear, cast no shadow, he was light, walked among us year by year, enlightening our days and nights. 
la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah louder la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah struggled all his life for god filled the air with his true sound taught our hearts and minds to press hands and foreheads to the ground people stoned him at taif drove him from his place of birth he returned to mecca to show the whole world islam's worth la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah last he stood on arafat charged us to convey islam to those present and those not on this planetary home call for unity among human beings everywhere leave divisions all aside join together in the prayer la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah allah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah god the one who sent him here god magnificent the great merciful to everyone higher law in every state god creator of our world breathing brings our bodies near to his power and his love touching every person here la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah we are basking in god's grace rain that falls and sun that beams blessing fills up every place animates our secret dreams take the atom we can't see filled with light by god's command space inside enough for suns moons and every grain of sand la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah mountains rivers streams and lakes canyons gorges trees and fields see god's grandeur in each place and the shining light it yields every eye is full of light every heart is full of grace every person that we meet has a glowing radiant face la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah how can anyone deny god and his true messenger how can anyone not praise the origin of each affair everywhere we turn we see god's face as the quran tells in the smallest thing alive in the greatest ocean swells la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah look into the farthest space our poor telescopes can scan planetary galaxies like the floating cells in man humans are a cosmos small cosmos is a human great filled with light from tip to toe that's humanity's true state la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah may allah our generous lord grant all man mankind sweetness now take into our hearts his grace make submissions humble vow give us all straight road to him take us to his heavenly throne give us contemplation there of his single face alone la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah give us certitude beyond anything that we can dream unity with god's pure light like creation's first sunbeam in our heartbeats let us sound praise and thanks with every breath there's no god only allah takes us far beyond our death la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah to a place that's radiant light to a place that can't be said die before you die hadith 
of the prophet God's blessed. There's no God, only Allah, stars and planetary spheres. Muhammad Rasulullah, wings for all our hopes and fears. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. When this song is ended here, echoes carry on its sound. La ilaha illallah, comes around and goes around. Muhammad Rasulullah lightens every person's load. Muhammad guides perfectly down each person's shining road. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam.